Welcome everyone to this week's uh, broadcast of Ascend TV, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm your co-host, Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. And our guest this week is Sean Bowman, casting and field producer of the highly successful and popular series, Love on the Spectrum. But before we get into our uh, program, Will, what's with your t-shirt this time? I'm glad you asked. This uh, this week's shirt is my is my USF athletics shirt. It represents the USF sports teams at USF. The USF has just started base their baseball season. I, I'm even going to go to their game later today. I'm going to be rooting for them the whole time. Excellent. Well, I know you've been a longtime fan of USF. Well, now uh, let's begin our program. Will, would you like to begin questions with our guest? Sean. Tell us about your background of love on the spectrum and its origins in the Australian show of the same name. Yeah. Um, so love on the spectrum. It was it was an Australian series, a, a docu series um, that aired on kind of our version of like the Australian version of PBS and then was picked up by Netflix, but um, by Keanu O'Cleary, um, the director creator. And that show was actually born out of a, another show that Kean had done called Employee With Me, which was about um, people on the autism spectrum, that um, disabilities, you know, getting into the workforce. And through meeting all these different people, realized that, you know, a lot of people just want to find a partner in addition to, you know, jobs and everything that, you know, everyone wants to find love. So he had um yeah so that's how the show was created and then he brought it over to the u.s after um the australian series gained some popularity on on netflix and then you know decided to do the u.s season how did you come to work on love on the spectrum oh i stalked kian once i saw love on the spectrum I, he didn't have a chance not to hire me no <laughs> uh, i was just a huge huge fan of the australian series um when it came to netflix in the u.s i watched um actually heard about it from a podcast on a comedian of the comedian nikki glazer was the first time i heard about it um uh, my roommate slash best friend um over COVID times we were in um, joshua tree hiking and listened to the podcast and we came home and we watched it my he is on the spectrum himself too uh and so we watched it together and i it, it, it the show represented everything that i moved out to la to get into film um to do you know it, it felt it was such a it did such an emotional and a positive impact i think the uh the series that i was like this is this is what i want to do uh and i just talked about it all the time in every job that i went on uh that i was like love on the spectrum is the like the goal show for me to to be on um so yeah it was just kind of a connection to the universe that i you know when i was reaching out to kian and um he i jumped on a zoom call at you know 7 p.m our time uh because you're in australia and he's like well i actually am coming to the u.s and starting it so let's keep in contact and then um yeah so through the whole COVID of it all the first season happened out here and it is it's a really small intimate team and it's been the greatest, most rewarding, hardest, most amazing uh, experience that could ever imagine. <laughs> what is the current season being filmed and timing for broadcasting? Oh yeah, so um, the current season, we, we actually, are, we are filming now um, and we will be filming for a few months. Um, yeah, and then as once, after it's filmed, we, uh, you know, goes into the post-production, the editing of it, and then the uh, Netflix will decide when to air it. So we think by the end of the year, before, yeah, by the end of the year, it should be airing. That was excellent. Um, Sean, a few questions. Uh, first of all, um, how do participants get picked? Mm. Yeah, I mean, there are a bunch of factors that I guess that go into it, but um, I would say the the number one uh, factor is do these people really want to find a partner? Are, are they really interested in dating um, and and want to find love? And then, of course, you know, there's other factors after that, but that's our main one. But the, yeah, the other factors be you know uh, diversity. That you know, we want uh, like a very diverse range of stories. Um, so you know, and that and that is in every sense of the word um, as far as, you know, 
race, sexual orientation, gender, um, as well as along the spectrum, you know, with um, support needs. And, you know, we, so we want to try to make it as inclusive as possible. And, and yeah, so that's all. But the number one is, do you really want to find a partner? Excellent. I have a question. Um, so um, besides singles, uh, have you above interviewed anybody else, like of other preferences? Have you even interviewed couples that, you know, have been well, a couple for a while, they've been on the spectrum, they talk about their experiences and you're saying as that's not their first experience, but um are not. who had? Yeah, yeah. So um well I guess we we in the Australian series they had mm -hmm. uh singles as well as we followed couples. Um I don't know if you remember uh, there was a Jimmy and Charnay who got engaged in the first season and then got married in the second season. Uh -huh. uh, and yeah, so we are, we have been open to that. We have, um, in the first season, we had, uh, you know, some su a successful couple. Um, mm, nice. So that would be nice to follow them. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're open, we're open to anything. Absolutely. And and then some of our single participants have been in relationships before that didn't work out. And so they're ready again. Following up with what you said uh, earlier, Sean, uh, along the lines of uh, people fitting the, the criteria that you mentioned, what makes a good participant as opposed to someone that either wouldn't be as good or wouldn't be picked as all. You, you know, we do meet with lots and lots of people and I wish we, you know, we could film with many more uh, because there's, there's some amazing stories out there and people that really do want to, want to find love. Uh, it, it is about um, maybe different locations that we're able to film at or, um, you know, if where we find matches, um, mm -hmm. you know, people that we think might be good to go on a date with each other and, and see how that goes. Um, yeah. But again, and then diversity as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's about finding the right mix, the right mix. So it's not that someone was, you know, not good when they, you know, or like wasn't a great character, or, you know, person. But um, yeah, it's about finding the, the right mix of people. Do you ever run into uh, potential participants who seem to have potential, but to be effective on the show? Um, to be cast or to possibly su achieve success, they'd need a little work. And if so, what kind of work would you work with them? In other words, someone, I'll give an example, uh, someone who again has potential, but they're a real mess and they need a makeover or something like that. Uh, Do you ever <laughs> deal with folks like that? Well, um, I would say, you know, we have, I don't know, we have an expert, um, Jennifer Cook, who, um, meets with some of the participants who are you know nervous for their first time going on a date or or do need some help and you know and she works them getting them uh getting them prepared and and uh, answering the questions of things that might come up on the date or you know to to get them ready so we do have a uh, jennifer cook that works with the participants and and answers some questions and then um to what do you attribute the popularity among both the general population as well as the neurodivergent community hmm yeah I would say that I I just think that love is so universal. <laughs> um, you know, these these issues that people have uh, going on dates, it's like, you know, everybody has that. You know, they um there are things that when you go on a date that you know you get nervous about or you don't know how to act a lot. So everyone can relate to that. You know, um a lot of, like I've had, you know, cast members ask me, like, okay, so what do I do if you know, who's, if this happens, and I'm like, I actually don't know, you know, like, I'm the same way. Yeah. <laughs> so, so everyone can kind of like relate to a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. you know? Sean, uh, what are the thoughts of um, having uh, different populations uh, in the, the program and uh, possibly in other countries as well? I mean, if I had it my way, we would have 40 seasons of Love on the Spectrum in every single country. <laughs> a question for Netflix, um, the distributors, and uh, Kian. Um, you know, what is what is kind of the next thing? Um, you know, absolutely open to other other countries. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be Kian. I mean, um, so after this series, I, I think it, it said that um, there was another show, um, Better Date Than Never, um, that Kian has been doing. Uh, so that one is yeah about people going on their first dates and that's it, that would be um you know it was there was a, a transgender woman who was going on her first date as a woman um it was uh 
a young lady down syndrome going on her first date so it was like a, a chinese exchange student in australia going on his first date ever um so it was more um expanded i guess there um so I mean, there's just like many opportunities to take this kind of format and, and keep going with it no matter where has anything surprised you about lo love on the spectrum yeah during the process um yeah I, I i feel like i'm constantly surprised um i think like i said earlier like some of the things that you know cast or potential cast has asked me like general questions um that i i don't know the answer to either um trying to give advice like um you know someone asked you know it it was a guy who was going to go on his for like a date with another guy and he's like well then who pays when you're on a <laughs> with your both guys and it's like you know i actually <laughs> i don't know how to answer that for you either so it's all these questions like that um you know they're some it's just no filters sometimes that it, that it's everything that we're thinking um <laughs> but not said so sean where are you filming now <laughs> So um, yeah, we have we are currently filming um, with with some participants, and we're always throughout filming. We're always looking for new people. So I, I know I said that we're filming now, but casting goes on up until the day we stop filming um, because we are filming all over the U.S. Um, and we're always looking for you know people that might be matches, like that might be good to go on a date with, even if we've already started filming with some people. So for instance, we are looking for um, young women in, um, some young women in Atlanta area um, and young women in the like Greenville, North Carolina area. We are looking for young women who are interested in dating women in Chicago. Um, but yeah, we'll be in different cities all over the all over the country. But really, and yeah, anywhere, please, please write in. <laughs> Excellent. And along those lines, if some of our viewers are interested in possibly being on the show, what is the best way to contact either you or other people in the program? Yeah, so we have a um, a portal now where you can just fill in your information and upload a picture. Um, it's the website is loveonthespectrum.castingcrane.com. Um, so yeah, Casting Crane, C-I-S-T-I-N-G-C-R-A-N-E.com. We'll now hear our uh, book reviewer, Jennifer Brooks, with her latest uh, review. Yes, thank you, Keith. And so as some of you may know, March is Women's History Month, which is a perfect time to shine a spotlight on a topic that doesn't get as much attention as it should. And that is the subject of Asperger's and girls. Yes, so the uh, stereotypical person with Asperger's is generally male. And the diagnosis of Asperger's, you know, boys are identified far more often than girls. And whether that really means um, women are less vulnerable to actually having Asperger's or they're just under identified, well, that's still up for debate. But this book has, it has nine chapters. It starts off with Tony Atwood sharing his opinions about why he thinks females on the spectrum are under identified. Catherine Faherty talks about the problems that are unique to women with AS and how these have been brought out via a unique support group program at TEACH. Then Sheila Wagner's contribution is a thoughtful and thorough piece, not just on the problems girls with AS experience in school, but also on the necessary scope and breadth of solutions that can save many girls from being shunted aside. Then Lisa Island gives us information from the point of view of a typical teen who not only has a brother with an autism spectrum disorder, but has also made friends with some of her female peers on the spectrum. Oh, good for you, Lisa. I wish you'd been at my high school. I would have loved to be friends with you. Mary Robel writes about the practical aspects of preparing the young girl with AS for puberty and the issues that arise as girls with AS move into womanhood. 
Teresa Bolick gives advice for that tricky time of moving from girlhood to womanhood. Parents inclined to be overprotective should read the chapter twice. Ruth Snyder provides insight as to her life and direction as a woman with AS who was not given the insight and support that she needed until much later than girlhood. Ruth Snyder is not alone. I am sure there are many women on the spectrum of a certain age who, <laughs> who were also not given the insight and support that they needed when they were young. And finally, the most famous woman on the autism spectrum, Temple Grandin, concludes the book with some words of wisdom on the importance of careers, as well as the reasons for her lack of interest in, in dating. Of course, as we just learned from Sean, not everyone on the spectrum has a lack of interest in dating. Many have a strong interest in dating, just don't know how to do it. But yes, there are actually some people on the spectrum who are not interested in dating. And that's okay. That's perfectly acceptable. Thank you very much again, Jennifer. We'll now hear in our final segment uh, from our cultural correspondent, Stacy Kennedy. Hi, everybody. So uh, today I'd like to announce uh, Saturday, March 18th, uh, we will have the uh, Information and Resource Fair Conference uh, happening, taking place at John O'Connell High School. Um, yeah, everyone will be present there for the first time ever since the um, pandemic. Um, maybe the maybe the one year before today or this year, maybe there was one meeting there. Otherwise, there will be uh, there will be uh, a joined uh, public, and um, where you get a great chance to well, first off, shake off everything from the isolation, and to learn many about the autism resources available in the area and um, from actual humans and the smorgasbord of exhibitors worth uh, checking out, plenty of workshops. And so that is Saturday, March 18th from 9 a.m. I think 8.30, doors usually open. And then there's actually usually a brunch, lunch, and coffee and lots of things there. Um, but you uh, sign up for Ascend. We'll have their own table as always um, when we attend. So um, May 25th not May 25th, March 25th, Saturday. That's my mom's birthday. <laughs> so, But what's also happening that day is the 16th annual autism update, uh, which will be sponsored by the Stanford Autism Center uh, through the lifespan, a person conference for parents, educators, and care providers of children and adults on the spectrum. Um, it'll be focused on new research and services for individuals to optimize their long-term functionings. And please note, this conference is focused on individuals who need a significant level of support. So um, again, that's the 16th annual Autism Update, Saturday, March 25th. Um, oh, when does it start? 8.45 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. PT at 326 Galvez Street, Stanford, uh, California, of course. Um, the last thing? Uh, Sunday, April 2nd, there's going to be this camping, uh, AC, ASD camping fun organized by Robin in Santa Rosa, California. Um, this is on meetup.com. This is how I found out about this group. And uh, age, for people age 35 years or older, you know, ideally, uh, and, and identified as being on the spectrum, can come and relax around the campfire. Um, the uh, purpose is to actually meet at Roundtable Pizza and talk about the best campsite, the first place you want to camp out at. And so uh, Roundtable Pizza, 2065 Occidental Road. <laughs> Weird. Um, but that's in Santa Rosa starting at 2. Thank you. Well, folks, that's our show for this week. Uh, I'm your co-host, Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Stacey Kennedy. I'm Sean Bowman. I'm Jennifer Brooks. And until next time, folks, uh, this is Ascend TV Life on the Street. Very best to all of you. Mm -hmm.